The Arctic Pro ACX 1280 is designed to efficiently and safely service R1234YF refrigerant in gasoline-powered and hybrid vehicles. Please be sure to read all important safety instructions and regulations located in the instruction manual before operating your ACX 1280. Always observe all warning notices on the unit and wear both protective goggles and protective gloves. The following functions will be reviewed. Refrigerant recovery and recharging, vacuum generation, flushing, and refrigerant identification. Please note that the ACX 1280 can only be operated with R1234YF refrigerant. When removing the packaging, use care to ensure there is no damage to the actual unit or the included accessories. Contact our customer service department immediately if any damage is suspected. Remove the bolt from the rear handle mounting hole, located on both sides of the ACX 1280. Rotate the handle upwards and over the top of the handle mounting spacers. Insert the bolt on each side through the handle and the spacer. Then tighten the bolt. Also, tighten the bolt at the front side of the handle to ensure it does not come loose at a later time. Remove the plastic bubble wrap from the handle. Here is the LCD main display. These are the selection and function keys. The circle or OK key confirms or stores current data. The square key function depends on the current menu. The triangle or back cancel key takes you back one menu level or cancels the current operation. The up or down control and the left or right control are used to scroll through the different menus. The Enter key is used to confirm and store the current data. The C key is used to delete characters to the left of the cursor. The I key displays current data. The alphanumeric key is used to switch between numbers or letters for input. The current mode is shown on the bottom right of the screen. The status warning light will blink green if the current operation is successful. Red means the current operation is unsuccessful. These are the high and low pressure gauges, the integrated printer, and refrigerant identifier. There are two service doors, one on the left side and one on the rear of the housing. Tools can be placed on the upper cover. The service door on the side provides access to the internal refrigerant bottle and the filter dryer. The service door on the rear permits access to the vacuum pump oil fill, drain bottle, and to the used oil bottle. To remove the used oil bottle, pull the connection upwards slightly and detach the bottle downwards. Never operate the ACX 1280 without the service doors. Now, we will go over some important information about connecting with the quick release couplings. The service quick release couplings are connected to the service connections of the vehicle air conditioning system during AC service. When not in use, the service quick release couplings can be connected to the parking flush couplers. To remove the service quick release couplings from the parking flush coupler, press the coupling slightly toward the connection and carefully pull the knurled section back to unfasten the coupler. To connect the coupling, position the coupling on the parking coupler or flush adapter, pull back the knurled section of the coupling element, and press carefully onto the connection. Before we begin, make sure the locking caster brakes are locked. Plug the ACX 1280 into a power supply and flip the rocker switch to the on position. It is important to note that the refrigerant identification unit is incorporated into the service procedure and is always used during the AC service. Now that the unit is powered up, the self-test starts automatically. A menu will appear following successful completion of the self-test, and the fan will switch on. From the main menu to select your language, select Settings, then General Settings, and Language. Use the arrow keys to select the correct language, and select OK. Now we will set the time and date. Select Settings, then General Settings, and Date and Time. Alter the values with input keys and move to the next value with the arrow keys. Select OK to save your entry. Next, we will set up any workshop data by selecting Settings, then General Settings, and Workshop Details. 
Here, a maximum of 30 characters can be entered. Delete any values with the C button and save entries with the OK. To activate or deactivate the printer, workshop info, buzzer, or operator list, go to Settings, then General Settings, then System Settings. Use the arrow key to make your selection and choose Activate or Deactivate with the arrow key. Remember to press Save to store your choices. The ACX 1280 stores service data sets. The factory limit value setting for the max number of data sets is 400. Please refer to the Owner's Manual for information regarding exceeding the limit of data sets. There are three service phases. The recovery phase is when the refrigerant is extracted from the vehicle, cleaned, and routed into the internal refrigerant bottle. The vacuum phase initializes a vacuum in the vehicle air conditioning system, and the system is checked for leaks. The recharge phase is when the vehicle air conditioning system is filled with a specified amount of R1234YF refrigerant. Let's start with adding a new vehicle to the operator-defined database. Select Settings, then My Database, and alter the values with the input keys. Store entries with the OK key. There are some important safety precautions that must be examined before the process can begin. Keep in mind that oil contamination will damage the refrigerant identification unit. If the refrigerant sample is supplied to the unit from the recycling equipment directly, it must be protected from oil that comes from the vehicle or that accumulates in service hoses. The operator must examine the hose and white sample filter for oil contamination prior to every service and stop immediately if any oil is observed. The gas pressure should be between 1.7 and 16 bar. Accurate gas analysis can be achieved with less than 1.7 bar, but additional time must be provided. In this case, start the flow of gas and then wait for 20 seconds before instructing the refrigerant identification unit to test the gas. Now, for refrigerant analysis, we will select Vehicle AC Service, then Refrigerant Identification. Follow the menu prompts for the ACX 1280. For decontamination, please refer to the Owner's Manual for complete directions on how to remove the contaminated refrigerant from the service hoses and couplers. Refrigerant ID can be done separately, but if you are going to recover through the automatic service option, the ID process is automatic. When the identification of refrigerant is successful, service may begin on the vehicle. Select Vehicle AC Service, then Automatic AC Service. Select the Direct Parameter Input or select Last 10 Vehicles or My Database. Follow the menu prompting. For Manual AC Service, select Vehicle AC Service, then Manual AC Service. Follow the menu prompting. The recovery, vacuum, and charging phases will cycle through each service. To flush the unit after changing the type of oil, select Vehicle AC Service, then AC System Flushing, then Short Flushing, follow the menu prompts. To drain the service hoses, select Maintenance, then Hose Drain, and follow the menu prompting. For setting service parameters, select Settings, then AC Service Parameters. Alter the parameters with the input keys. The parameters can be preset at the start of the corresponding service phase in manual and automatic AC service. The ACX 1280 performs a system leak test to check that none of the components carrying refrigerant are leaking. After 68 kilograms or 150 pounds of refrigerant has been processed, after combo filter replacement, or after 60 hours vacuum time, the operator is requested to perform a system leak test. It should only take 30 minutes. 
Select Maintenance, then System Leak Test. The leak test process will begin. Refer to the Owner's Manual for any troubleshooting. ACX 1280 Maintenance Never perform any maintenance work which is not expressly recommended in the Owner's Manual. Contact customer service if components have to be replaced other than in the course of maintenance work. The ACX 1280 stores various protocols which can be printed out for the last three system service reports, including self-test report, refrigerant report, error report, and operating hour meter. To print, select maintenance, then service report. Use the arrow keys to select and print the protocol. Part of the routine maintenance is calibrating the scales. To begin, select Maintenance, then Maintenance Calibration, then Scale Calibration. Enter password 227 and select Refrigerant, then select OK. Enter the weight. Attach the calibrating weight and select OK. Calibration is completed. Select OK and remove the calibrating weight. To calibrate the used oil bottle scale, select Maintenance, then Maintenance Calibration, then Scale Calibration. Enter password 227, select the used oil scale, then remove the bottle, select OK, attach the calibrating weight to the scale selected, enter the weight, select OK, and the calibration is complete. For a calibration check and tearing of scales, refer to the owner's manual. Next, we will discuss how to replace the inline filter of the ACX 1280. Inline filters must always be changed when replacing the filter dryer. The inline filters consist of a filter element fitted in the hose adapter. First, drain the service hoses. Then, disconnect the service hoses from the inline filters. Remove the filter element. Then install the new filter element. Make sure the sealing ring is correctly positioned at the adapter and not damaged. Replace the sealing ring if it is damaged. Then screw the inline filter on the adapter. Then attach the service hoses to the adapter. This completes the steps to replace the inline filter. The vacuum pump oil must be changed after 60 hours of operation. The message, Change Vacuum Pump Oil, appears on the screen when the vacuum pump oil needs changing. Only use the vacuum pump oil specified by Molly in the owner's manual. First, to change the vacuum pump oil, place a container under the drain on the back side of the unit. Open the rear service door and slide the cover open to expose the oil fill port. Open the drain plug and filler plug of the vacuum pump. Drain all of the oil and then close the drain plug. Pour the vacuum pump oil into the oil fill port until the oil level is somewhere between the minimum and maximum lines. Power the unit on and start a vacuum process. Be sure to check the oil level. The oil level is accurate when the level is midway between full and empty. To reset the oil change interval, select Maintenance, then Service Report Statistics, and Vacuum Pump Oil Life. The time since the last oil change will be displayed. Press the Reset button and store the entries and return with the OK key. To change the combo filter, follow all safety precautions in the owner's manual. It is important to note that the ACX 1280 will disable at the end of the filter service life. Each filter is marked with a unique code and this code must be entered when replacing the filter. 
It is not possible to operate the ACX1280 if the code is reused. The ACX1280 is also disabled once 150 pounds of R1234YF refrigerant has passed through the filter. A new filter must be installed and its unique code entered in the ACX1280 before vehicle service can be performed. It's important to pay attention to the correct positioning of the two O-rings when fitting a new filter. We are now ready to change the filter. First, drain the service hoses. Remove the service door and loosen the filter using a 1 and 3 8 wrench. Remove the filter. Make sure the old sealing rings are removed before securing the new filter. Insert a new filter and tighten the filter to 74 foot-pounds. Reattach and secure the service door. Reset the filter replacement interval by selecting Maintenance, then Service Report, then Statistics, and the filter dryer life. Enter the 16-digit PIN number on the new filter. Store entries and return with OK. To install a software update of your ACX1280, please note that this can only be done via USB stick and that the scales must be recalibrated after a firmware update. The first step is to make sure the machine is powered off. Then, press and hold the 8 key while turning the machine back on. When the display shows Firmware Update in the lower left corner, release the key. When the Firmware Update screen loads, please insert Update Disk will appear. Insert the USB drive into the USB port located on the left side of the machine. Press the triangle key to update the unit. A status bar will appear while the software loads. This process can take several minutes. After completion, the unit will confirm that the update has completed. Remove the USB drive and power the unit off. To replace the printer paper, pull the printer lever until the cover is released. Change the roll of paper. Close the cover. This concludes the maintenance instruction. For additional instructions, refer to your owner's manual or call Molly Technical Support for assistance. Visit servicesolutions.molly.com for additional information on tools and equipment from Molly Service Solutions.